Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining us today on The King of Random. Not too long ago, we showed you how to make a desktop vortex fountain, something that used a pump in a small cistern of water, pumped it up into a cup in a spiral so that as it drained out, it formed sort of a water tornado. Well, that was pretty cool, but today we're gonna try and suit that up to make a larger, full-size vortex fountain. And we have a couple of twists we're gonna add in as well. The basic idea is the same. This orange bucket we'll be using as our cistern down below. We have a pump that can move up to 550 gallons of water per hour. Instead of the drinking straw we used on the miniature one, we've got this flexible vinyl hosing. We'll make this drink dispenser the part of our fountain that houses the vortex. We also have this plastic 16 inch diameter tray. One of the first things we need to do is to take off all of the excess pieces that come with this drink dispenser. It's got a lot of cool accessories, but we're not gonna use them. Now we also want to remove the spigot here, but after we remove it, we do want to keep this thicker rubber seal that's on the outside. One of the first steps we'll take is giving ourselves an attachment method for the hose outside of the container that will also angle the water on the inside of the container. At Ace Hardware, I managed to find these plastic pieces that turn at an angle and are smaller on one side than at the other so that they link together nicely. The smaller end also fits perfectly with our 3 8 inch vinyl hose. What we're going to do is fit the narrow end of one of these elbows through the hole where the spigot was in our drink container. We'll then attach the other elbow to the first one through the container. Because the hole is larger than the piece of plastic going through it, we're also going to take the rubber seal that was on the spigot and use that to seal everything up. Now that may hold water a little bit, but we want to make sure it's 100% waterproof. So we're also going to take our hot glue gun and spread a ring of warm glue around this edge and then we'll put this on and press the rubber down into that. That should give us a really nice seal that will never leak. Now, while that's cooling, let's also drill a hole in the very center of the bottom of our vortex chamber. A 3 8 inch drill bit is smaller than the diameter of the pipe leading into this chamber, and our pump should give us enough volume of water that it can keep up with a hole 3 8 inch wide. With the point of entry and exit for the water, we need to drill similarly placed holes in our plastic tray. Just a note about this plastic tray, I found this one at a thrift store for about two bucks. If you don't happen to have any of these available at your local thrift store, any plastic tray about this size should work, as long as it has a little bit of a lip on the edge. This one is 16 inches in diameter. First we'll drill a hole in the very center. That's where the water will drain down through after it leaves the vortex chamber. Now the water after it leaves the vortex chamber and is going through this tray, it doesn't need to come through a perfectly sized hole that just barely lets all the water through. It can have plenty of space on the sides. So I'm actually gonna use a larger drill bit and just give a hole about an inch wide in the middle of this tray. When we have the hole in our vortex chamber lined up perfectly with the hole in our plastic tray, we can see approximately where we need to drill the second hole that will let the tube come up from the pump to feed water into our tank. Once again, this hole doesn't have to be exactly the same size as the hose. It can be a little bit larger. I'm not gonna stick with the one inch. I'm gonna take it down just a little bit. I've got my three quarter inch drill bit and that's what I'm gonna use for our second hole in the tray. We've got two holes drilled into our tray, one hole drilled into the center of the bottom of our vortex chamber, and of course one spot where the piping is gonna take the water up from the pump into our vortex chamber. Once our whole fountain is up and running, some of the water will be filling out of the vortex chamber and landing on the tray. To help it drain faster back into the bucket, we're gonna drill just a few more holes in it. I do want to make sure all of the holes are set fairly far in. If they're out near the edges, that will actually be wider than where the bucket was and all of the water will just drain onto the ground. For these holes, I'm going one step smaller and using a 5 8 inch drill bit. Our plastic tray now has eight holes drilled into it. Now let's set this aside and work on our pump for a minute. This pump is designed to be submerged completely underwater as it's working. It has a nozzle at the top where all of the water will spray out. What we need to do is use our hose to connect this nozzle to the input of our vortex tank. When our pump is in the bucket, you can see we won't actually need all that much hose. It will only need to connect from about here to here. To make sure that we have enough while we do our accurate measurement, I'm just gonna cut off an extra six inches of it and then do our measuring from there. This 3 8 inch hose is a little bit too small to fit over the nozzle easily, but I've found if you just kind of wiggle it and press it, you can actually get it on fairly well. As you can see, this vinyl tubing really likes to curl itself up and we want it to be pointing basically straight. So what we're gonna try and do is use a little bit of heat to make it soft enough that we can straighten it out and then have it cool down like that. 
There we go, that's way better in terms of shape. We'll just let that cool down a little bit and it'll be a lot straighter. All right, our hose has now been warmed up, reshaped a little bit and cooled down and it's being much more agreeable standing mostly straight up. So let's try throwing the pump into the bucket, putting the tray on top and running the hose through the hole to see how long we need to cut this off. Now see that we want to cut our hose off right about here. Beautiful. Put that right into the nozzle. Hole in the center of our vortex chamber lines up wonderfully with the hole in the tray. That's just how we want it to look. At this point, I think we are ready to put water in the bucket and give our vortex chamber a test. Now we need to make sure that we have enough water in the bucket. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour water in until it completely covers the pump. And then we want to add at least the volume of this container on top of that. That way, no matter how full this gets, our pump will have enough water to keep going. All right, that's a bucket full of water. And since we're at the sink, let's just do some testing right here in case it spills anywhere. All right, here goes. You see, quite a good volume of water comes out of this thing. It's a good little pump. We've already got a little bit of a vortex forming in there. And even though the water is draining out the bottom, it's pumping in fast enough that the water level continues to climb. This whole apparatus is a little bit of a slope right now, partly because it's in the sink, which I think has a sloped bottom, and also because the power cord from the pump is in between the bucket and the tray over here, and it's making it tilt on one side. That is a whirlpool from top to bottom. Just what we want to see. All right, we know it's working. I'm going to unplug it and let it drain. Now, of course, there's no more water coming in, but it's still draining out the middle. So it just keeps going with the whirlpool as the water level drops. All right, that worked great. Now there are a few changes I want to make so it works even more smoothly. One of the first things I want to change is I'm going to cut a notch in the top of the bucket so that when the cord fits in that notch, the tray can sit flush on the top. So I'm just going to mark a spot on our bucket where I want the notch to be, then I'll get a saw and cut that down. Perfect, now our cord can just sit right there and our tray will sit flush on top of that. Cutting a notch in the bucket is the first modification I wanted to do. The second is a little bit more colorful. I have here a string of LED strip lighting, which can be made to shine in a whole big variety of colors and patterns, and the power system that drives it all. The plan is that the strip of LEDs will come in through the side of the tray and wrap around the inside of the bottom of our vortex fountain. That way we can choose the color of our fountain lights. We'll drill a small hole in the bottom of the tray, run the lighting through there, and then we'll use hot glue to seal that off. There should be plenty, but just to be sure, I'll give myself like another foot, and that's where I'll cut it off. Now these LEDs are designed to be cut every two inches or so with a little mark. That fits nicely up through where we just drilled a hole. That's good. All right, so I think the best position is going to be for this box to be vertically up and down next to the bucket. I'm going to use some tape to secure it in place. I'm also just going to tape this piece in place. I'm leaving a fair amount of slack in our LED line because I need to be able to lift the tray a little bit without it just immediately disconnecting everything I've got in there. And yes, in case any of you are wondering, this lighting system is actually waterproof. It's not good to get any of the control box pieces wet, but that shouldn't be a problem. Let's give our lights another test. Ha! Beautiful, lighting right up at the bottom of our vortex chamber, just how we want it to. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna use a little bit more tape and just sort of secure these two power cords so that they're together and near the bottom. Now our fountain is looking pretty good, but we still have this bright orange bucket and a bunch of exposed wires and cables and stuff. So we don't want that. We want it to look a lot more sleek and professional. On our tabletop vortex fountain, we used popsicle sticks glued to the bottom container to make it look a little bit more classy. 
Well, that's not going to work so well with our bucket, but I do have an idea that will give us a similar look. These are some bamboo window blinds that I picked up at Home Depot for about $15, I think. What I want to do is cut them at just the right height so they fit right underneath this lip so that they go all the way around our bucket and all of our wiring and cables. It looks like the right height right about here, almost exactly halfway in between the top and the bottom of our blinds here. Now I want to cut off the edge of this set of blinds because it's got some hardware that I'm not going to need. But before I do that, I'm just going to add a little spot of glue everywhere so that I don't have these other lines of string unravel. Not bad. We got a little bit of splintering on the back, but overall I think that worked quite nicely. All right, now I'm just going to take our bamboo screen here. I'm going to wrap it around. Also, I'm just going to snip a couple of these to let our cords out over on this side of the bucket. This is the IR receiver for controlling our lights, so I also just want to sort of wedge that through in a spot so that we can have it sticking out and able to receive signals from our remote control. We do have some excess bamboo, so I'm going to seal off the strings using hot glue again and then cut it off. Surprisingly difficult. There we go, I think we have ourselves a fountain. If you remember from the desktop Vortex fountain, we used a bunch of little pebbles to go around as decoration. I really liked how that looked, so I'm gonna do the same thing with a little bit larger of rocks for this one. All right, I have here a power strip that has an on off switch to it so that we can control the pump even when it's plugged in. Here goes nothing. Get some lights going with it. Oh yeah, oh that looks awesome. <laughs> uh oh, I got leakage. I didn't use glue to seal off where the lighting went down. I forgot about that. Remember when I said I was gonna use hot glue and seal it off? I need to use hot glue and seal it off. All that, not really supposed to happen. Doesn't look like it's dripping. I think we're good. All right, wow, with the lights off, this thing looks incredible. The LED lights at the bottom do an amazing job of just lighting up the entire fountain. There are tiny, tiny little bubbles swirling through the water, and I think it does a really good job of lighting those off, and it also reflects off of the top of the water pretty well, so the whole thing looks like it's glowing. All right, let's try this again outside. I do have one more little thing that I've added to this one. I talked about how I really like the look of the tiny little bubbles mixed in with the water swirling around because they do a good job of catching the light. Well just to take things another step farther, I actually added a hose going into the bottom that wraps around in a circle with some tiny little holes pricked in it. So I'm going to add some pressure and we'll see if we can get some larger bubbles swirling around in the mix with it. There we go, now we've got much larger bubbles swirling around in there. You can see that it makes the tornado a little bit less effective. As there's gaseous bubbles running around, the overall density of the fluid in the container is lower, so it has a harder time maintaining the tornado. Now there's one other thing I didn't mention. These aren't oxygen bubbles, they're propane. So now we have a colorful, glowing, fire vortex fountain. This is one of the coolest things I've ever built. Look at this, it's color and vortex and it's on fire. Ah, I love this thing. That looks so good. You could roast marshmallows on a fountain. When have you ever been able to roast marshmallows on a fountain before? Ah, I love it. There you have it guys, not just a vortex fountain and not just a light up vortex fountain, but a light up vortex fountain that lights on fire. This is basically the same build as our tabletop vortex fountain. It's just a lot bigger uh, and we added some lights and some propane gas to it so you can ignite it. But it's a pretty simple build. I built this whole thing in just a few hours and it works out very well. Like this is something that I definitely want in my house. Maybe not with the fire all the time, but if it's an outdoor fountain, then probably with it. Thanks for joining us for this project today and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. There it is, strobe light, seizure effect. A little piece of leaf floating around in there. I want to grab it. Mm. 
Can't spin a basketball. <laughs>